بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح علیہ صدری او اللہ اوپن مائی چیسٹ سو ٹوڈے از آور فرسٹ لیکچر فار آور سبجیکٹ جیو ٹیکنیکل انجینئرنگ ٹو اینڈ دی فرسٹ چیپٹر دیٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو کور فار دس سبجیکٹ ایز دی شیئر اسٹرینتھ آف سالس سو لیٹ می رائٹ ایٹ شیئر اسٹرینتھ آف سالس اوکے So before we go in further detail that what shear strength is and how the soil uh, uh, so sorry how the shear strength for the soil can be determined let us go and have a look at the videos first uh, and then we can further discuss it oh. <laughs> So you see here a whole land mass fell down. Now this is another slope and you can see small rock starting to fall down and let's see what happens in a minute. And you see this big rock, oh my god and there it has struck and this is the power of earth. And you see the school building falls down. Oh, Oh, see that car falling down. This is really disastrous. Oh, my God. Huge. So, there are tons of videos on internet, on YouTube. The, that will actually uh, you just actually type landslide failures and then you will see a ton of videos so uh, the purpose of showing you the videos is to let you know the importance of this topic that is shear strength all the failures that we have seen in the videos so all of them they failed actually or they caused this catastrophe basically due to the shear strength of the soil so now you can imagine well that how important this topic is so <clears throat> all the aspects uh, of soil stability okay on bearing capacity or slope stability just like the videos we have just seen and then supporting capacity of the foundations and penetration resistance all of these depends on the soil shear strength okay so my question is that what other type of strength soils do have so i am talking about shear strength so do you think soil has any other strength does soil has tensile strength or does soil has a compressive strength so try to find some answer for this question and then we can discuss in our live classes okay all right so the stress deformation and the stress deformation along with time behavior okay these soils uh, of the soils they are important in any problem where the ground movements are or of interest so you have just seen that the ground was moving so in all these cases so to prevent all these problems that we've just seen in the video so we should be knowing the stress deformation behavior and the stress versus deformation versus time behavior of the soils so this is what we do in the shear strength chapter of the geotechnical engineering 2 so basically we are finding out the stress deformation relationship so by a you were all well aware of the stress so that means if i take a soil block so if I'm applying a stress, so naturally we know that there would be deformation happening. So once we include this time within, in, within this, so that means we should know that how long 
will this deformation will take place okay we know that stress is change in length over length so we can know that that how long is this going to take to change or to cause the strain so uh, most relationships for determining the stress strain relationship or we can call this a stress deformation relationships all of them are empirical okay so empirical means that there is no exact procedure that how they would develop but different uh, hypotheses were made and then scientists would do and researchers would do tests based on their hypothesis and then eventually they would end up having an equation so empirical relation basically comes out of a lot of experimentation and then they average out this data and from that data they can uh, generate equations okay so the most commonly used is this mohr coulomb's equation now right it is by far the most widely used for the shear strength determination of the soil samples so it says that you see this star it is called a star or okay so we call that as stress or we call that as shear stress so shear stress is equal to c when we are already familiar this is the cohesion of the soil and sigma ff that is the normal stress of the soil all right and phi is the angle of internal friction so <clears throat> the, the this, this lower equation it is similar it just has is this apostrophe sign on top of it we will discuss what the main difference but you should know that from the Mohr, based on the Mohr Coulomb's equation, it says that the shear stress is, or or uh, okay, its shear stress is equal to the cohesion plus sigma ff tan phi, or the cohesion plus normal stress into the tan of the angle of internal friction. So we have already seen that tau of f is the shear stress at failure. So once this is the shear stress of the failure so that means we are talking about the shear strength so this is how we explain the shear strength definition it is the maximum shear stress that a soil can bear without failure or just before failure okay so it is the capacity of the soil to bear the maximum stresses so that maximum value of shear stress is called as the shear strength of the soil so shear strength of the soil is equal to cohesion of the soil plus normal stress so ff indicates at the time of failure okay so the shear stress is equal to cohesion plus normal stress at time of failure into tan of phi where c and phi are the properties of the soil if i take a soil sample and i run some tests on that so from those tests i can predict the values of cohesion and angle internal friction whereas shear strength to ff is the thing that we need to find out and sigma ff is the normal stress acting on the soil sample at the time of failure <clears throat> so <clears throat> generally the resistance of the soil originates mainly from the interparticle contact so we know that I'm sure that we've already discussed the difference between the total stress and the effective stress so it's just to jog your memories so sorry so total stress is equal to the effective stress minus the sorry plus the pore water pressure and if you remember the Terzaghi's one dimensional theory so you remember that from there uh, remember from the spring theory we know that all the load is majorly initially taken up by the pore pressure and after a while all the excess pore pressure dissipates and the load actually comes on the effective stress so grain to grain contact or the stress transfer is called as the so this grain to grain contact and the stress transfer is indicated by the stress indicated by the effective stress or the sigma dash so we know that shear resistance is basically due to the interparticle contacts so the second equation where we were having these apostrophe signs or the effective stress signs this is the one that is the more fundamental one okay so in reality actually the shear resistance of a soil depends on many factors and if we write an equation so you see there that shear resistance or the maximum we can call, call that as the maximum shear strength resistance or the shear strength so that depends on this e we know that that is the void ratio f means it's a function of so c is the effective cohesion phi dash is the effective angle internal friction 
Sigma dash is the effective normal stress at the time of failure. C, it is the composition of the soil, the material or the minerals that are making it up. And H is the stress history that how the stress was, soil was loaded in the past. And T is the temperature of the time of the failure. E indicates the strain produced in the soil and E dash is the strain rate that with time how much is strain being applied and S is the structure of the soil. So you see there are a lot of variables that actually define a shear strength. So you see that it becomes really tricky. You cannot, if, if, if you go back to the mohr coulomb equation, so you see that it is saying that shear strength only depends mainly on this cohesion value, okay, and on the angular internal friction and lastly on normal stress. But in this equation that we've seen here, uh, or the thing we were explaining here with the shear resistance, so you see there are a lot of variables and mohr only covers the C, phi and normal stress, whereas all of the other things we have just seen, they all affect the behavior of the soil and eventually affect the shear strength of the soil, okay? So Mohr equation is an actually a very, very old equation and the very first or the basic one. So later on people uh, consider all these different factors and they develop further equations. So we will see in our coming lectures that how the Mohr Coulomb equation was the initial one and then later on with time and with the more research coming in this area, how people change and upgrade the Mohr Coulomb equation, okay? Uh, but for now, we will see that what Mohr Coulomb equation was. So, <clears throat> uh, so okay, before we go further, there's one more thing we want to discuss. So, all the parameters in this equation, they are not, they may not be independent, like uh, they can be dependent on each other. So, for instance, if we talk about the void ratio, so if the void ratio is lesser, then it can affect the cohesion and angular internal friction. If it is lower, then it can also have an effect on the angular internal friction, okay? So all of them may be related and may be correlated or may be unrelated, okay? So because of this huge variation, okay? The shear resistance values including C and phi, okay? C and phi here, they are determined using specific test types, i.e. there are different tests like direct shear test, triaxial test, simple shear test, okay? So depending on the test type, what was the drainage condition during the test, what was the amount of load that we are applying or the rate of load we are applying and range of confining pressure and the stress history of the soil, all of these, we, of these things, they would affect the shear strength of the soil, okay? So you see here, there is a very, very complex thing here. I'll just repeat what I just said. So we said that based on Mohr Coulomb equation, shear stress is simply or the shear strength is equal to C plus sigma tan phi. This is what Mohr Coulomb equation says. But actually, in reality, it depends on the void ratio, it depends on the stress history, it depends on the strain rate, okay? So there are a lot of factors that depend. So if we use our direct shear test, okay, then we may get a different result of, of the shear strength, okay, for the same soil. And if we run a triaxial compression test, then we can also have a different result, okay? And simple shear is another method of finding out the shear strength. So it will also give me a different result. On the contrary, if I fix one test, let's say if I do a triaxial test and I'm using the drainage conditions in different ways, sometimes it is drained and sometimes it is undrained. So the same soil and the same test will give me a different answer. Okay. Similarly, if I change the rate of loading for the same test, so it will also give me a different answer, okay? So you see the complexity here. So shear strength is why, that's why it's very, very complex and it's important to understand that shear strength values that we get out of it, they are dependent on the test type that we're doing and the test conditions. So I'll write it here that shear strength is dependent on many factors, but the important one is this, the test apparatus that I'm using to find out the shear strength that will affect my result and the test conditions and by test conditions I mean if the test was drained, it was undrained, it was uh, how the loading rate was changing and how the confining pressure was affecting. So all of that is going to affect my result for a shear strength test. 
So now the question comes that if there is such long variability, then how then how we will decide that which test method is going to be used for which situation? So uh, before going further detail, I'll just like to read it out here. You see here it says that as a result, different friction angles and cohesion values have been defined. So for total stress, effective stress, drain, undrain, peak strength, residual strength, the shear resistance value application is practice depends on factors. So this is important that the shear resistance values that shear resistance or shear strength or we can call them C, Phi, Sigma, Tau, all of them when they are how they are applied in practice in the real life it depends on the factors such as whether or not the problem is one of loading or unloading whether or not short term or long term stability is of interest and stress orientation so you see here that we will have to look at the field problem that we are dealing with and then based on that we will select the test apparatus that we are going to use and then lastly we will select the test conditions that what test conditions will apply so that they will actually replicate the field conditions all right generally uh, we don't pay much focus on these details that why we just generally we are talked about the shear strength parameters and the shear strength values okay so but uh, it is very important to remember throughout your career in civil engineering that shear strength is a very very big variable and to uh, keep that picture in mind remember this figure here uh, or an equation here that shear strength is depending on so many factors and they have these factors affect each other and these factors are controlled by external variables also okay all right so so this was initial detail that how shear strength is going to affect uh, 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 our soil so we have seen some videos also related to the shear strength failures okay so now we come to methods of finding out shear strength so we have seen here there are different methods are there different tests uh, we just uh, saw a list here let me go back to that list so just a minute so this one here that direct shear test triaxial test and simple shear test so we will discuss them in detail that how these tests work so while we were discussed why we will be discussing these tests so i'm sure uh, some queries would be answered uh, which you might have up till now okay so this uh, first test okay that is let me zoom that up for you so this is a assembly for a direct shear test okay so in a direct shear test what we have done here is that let me highlight that for you so this is this all in blue color is a soil sample so blue color indicates the soil so this is the soil sample uh, we will just come to uh, to the size in a minute so this is the soil sample and on top and bottom of the soil sample we have these porous stone porous stone is indicated by the brown color here okay and you see this is placed inside a shear box so this whole thing here this whole thing here is called as a shear box so you see here this is important to note here that you see there is a gap here and there is a gap here in the box okay so what we actually do is that we apply a shearing stress on the top portion all right so as a result what would happen the lower portion this lower portion here now i'll draw a line here so this lower portion here this is fixed okay and once we're applying the load okay so what will happen this will move forward okay and the moving forward is the amount of moving forward by the load we are applying is indicated by the proving ring and the amount of deformation that we are going to happen is also observed by the deformation dial gauge uh, let me draw a more simpler diagram okay to make things further clear so we will take a soil sample this is the so it is placed in actually two halves 
so this is the soil sample okay and then it is placed inside uh, your box and we know that there is a porous stone on the top and this is a metal box metal box has two halves and they are not connected together so this portion is fixed here okay so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to apply a horizontal force we call that as a shear force indicated generally by F so on this side there is a rigid wall here and there is a proving ring that is attached and also there is a deformation dial gauge that is attached here so this will tell me that how much load or the shear force that I'm applying and this will tell me how much deformation is happening so after some time what will happen if I see that after some time what will happen the upper portion because upper portion is free to move and the lower portion is fixed so the upper portion would be a little ahead of the lower portion so this was the lower portion of the soil sample and this was the upper portion of the soil sample so let's say this moves by an amount of delta H so how do I know this delta H value by this deformation dial gauge it tells me that how much amount of movement has happened and the amount of force that was applied to cause this movement is indicated by the proving ring or the load dial gauge okay so if you remember that okay we, we we have this idea in mind that why we need to do this so if you remember basically from the friction definition so if you remember from your intermediate classes you see that we remember that we had a plain board and on top of that was a wooden box or a wooden piece and we will see that at what angle the box just starts to move so that value at which box just starts to move we know that this is the shear force and the value we can calculate that at what angle the box just start to move that was the limiting friction so similarly in case of soils what's happening is that we just saw that particle to particle contact so if let's say if this is the lower layer of the soil and I'll uh, draw that with a different color the upper layer of the soil So this was the upper, uh, red indicates the upper half of the soil and blue indicates the lower half. So the force of friction between particle to particle contact, okay, that is resisting the movement. So if, if you can imagine that we are applying this, this is the upper portion, so we are applying a shear force F on the upper portion of the soil. So that is pushing each particle in this direction. And this shear strength here, <clears throat> shear strength between these particles to particle interaction that is going to resist this moment okay so this is going to be resisted so what happens that you are applying the load you keep on applying the load and at after a certain while this load value increases so much that it overcomes the friction between the particles okay and then the particles start to move forward so at that time we will have a moment just like this one here that the upper half starts to move ahead okay so uh, so after uh, so during the test what we do we take the reading of the time we take reading of the deformation dial gauge and we take the reading of load dial gauge or we also call that as a proving ring so deformation tells the amount of deformation that is happening and load dial gauge is telling us how much load we are applying so if we plot a chart between the values so on x-axis we have the strain and strain is equal to change in length over the original length okay and on y-axis we have the load applied so we will have a chart just like this so from here we can have the top value or top peak it is the shear strength of the soil that how much soil has taken the strength before failure because you see as the curve is moving down so that means failure is happening so after this point soil is failed okay we will see further details that how this test works and what are the 
calculation methodology and plotting of the chart in the lab portion where we discuss all these methods in detail. So uh, there are a few uh, important points regarding this drag shift test. So you see here that the size of the drag shift is 6 by 6 centimeter. Okay, uh, if, uh, if I draw the plane view, so this is how this box. So this is a box that is hollow. Oh, sorry. Okay, this is the box. And it is divided into two portions. So uh, within this empty box, we fill the soil. Okay, and then we press the upper portion. So the size of the box or the size of the sample that comes inside, this is 6 centimeter by 6 centimeters. So this is also 6 centimeters. So this is also 6 centimeter, and the sample compacted inside is 2 centimeter high. So this is generally what we use for sandy soils and clays. But for there is also an option of using a large box that is 30 by 30 by 30 centimeter, and the height of the specimen would be 15 centimeter if we are going to check for a gravelly soil. Okay, so I guess uh, then there is a second test that is the triaxial test. So let us stop here for today and you go through the lecture and we discuss that in our class and then we can conclude it. Okay, uh, thank you so much and take care. Assalamu alaikum.